Ask any community fan, when the beloved NBC sitcom was at its most ambitious, when it cemented its identity and legacy, when it cranked out some of the best and most interesting episodes of broadcast TV in recent memory, and you'll most likely hear the same answer, repeated again and again. Season 3. This is when the show really started swinging for the fences, consistently. The cast had fully figured out their characters, the writers had figured out how they all fit together, and Community had become fully committed to exploring the weirdest, most outre aspects of its identity. But that isn't to say that this season, these episodes, are universally beloved. That side of things is what I'm interested in today. Was there a downside to this new, wackiest approach? Did the show pay a price to enter this imperial period? Period. That's what we're asking in today's episode of Streets Ahead, the series where we go year by year to look at the season premieres of Community. This time we're jumping into season 3 with Biology 101. Abed has a new favorite TV show, Jeff. It's called Inspector Space Time. Can it, boobs! It's a memorable episode, but not everyone's the biggest fan of it, as it turns out, and as such, I think it's a telling microcosm of this season, of the show's most interesting period. Biology 101 picks up after the two-part season 2 finale, which saw Pierce finally leave the group after his villain arc. Now I'm back. he's back, or so it seems. Everyone but Jeff is ready to accept him, but since he couldn't get a place in biology, Jeff manages to keep him out of the study group proper. Pierce! We'll see you when we see ya. This is all fine and dandy until Jeff himself gets kicked out of biology, letting Pierce in, and the tables are turned. Jeff gets a taste of being the outsider, to a degree he never had before, and this experience, combined with some unexpected chemical assistance, leads to a bust-up of legendary proportions. I've become... agitated. I apologize. It seems like that's the nail in the coffin, that Jeff's finally out for good, only for something truly unexpected to happen. Pierce takes the fall for Jeff's deranged behavior, takes the prestige hit to bring things back to normal. And that's basically it. Along the way, we're introduced to Inspector Spacetime, as well as Vice Dean Laybourne and Professor Kane, in my eyes, two of the show's best guest characters. And speaking of the new, this episode kickstarts a lot of the fresh dynamics the third season would embrace. Alongside Jim Rash his promotion to series regular, the Dean's got a meatier role, he's a perspective character here, and the little story he gets is the prelude to that whole aircon repair school story that's one of this season's through lines. Similarly, we get to see the start of the Chang villain arc, and Brit is just an idiot now. Season 3! But beyond the more obvious stuff, the setup, the shifts in characterization, Biology 101 also gives us a look under the hood of Season 3, what's driving the show this time around. And we see this from minute one, in the song. I can't just play you the whole thing, because the studios that own the rights to programs like this tend not to understand fair use very well, so I'll have to play it to you in chunks, but this is how the episode starts. We're gonna fly to school each morning we're gonna smile the entire time We're gonna be more happy We're gonna finally be fine Now, in the episode, this song is Jeff's vision of the prospect of a year without Pierce. Jeff! Oh, sorry. Uh, what was the question? What are we gonna do without Pierce in the study group this year? But the sequence plays another function. In opening the premiere, opening the season of a show which had struggled with numbers, in a musical sequence pledging conformity, promising facetiously to dial the weird back, stay normal, stay fun, We're gonna seem like a mainstream dream and be appealing to all mankind. We're gonna have more fun and be less weird than the first two years combined. The episode gestures toward the audience, toward the show's reception and consumption, and from the way Biology 101 pushes back against this pressure to be normal, lambasts it, you can sort of detect how keenly this pressure was being felt. Whether that pressure, those expectations came from the network, the audience, or the minds of the writers themselves, the message here is clear. Community's not giving in. Toward the end of the episode, this is all made rather explicit. I just came by to tell everyone one this year isn't going to be that different. The Dean's story this episode functions as a sort of continuation of that opening song. His new, prim, proper, and economically minded persona, utterly defeated by a series of increasingly odd, increasingly expensive, increasingly invincible obstacles. 
You bring your head down to my appendage tomorrow, and I'll show you what's up. To see it all come crashing down is cathartic, and sets the tone for the year to follow. You want Greendale to get normal? To chill out and be happy? Yeah, no. Here's an episode about monkey gas hallucinogenics, axe rampages, and secret AC repair schools. And it only gets weirder and darker after this. In the episodes to follow, that original slice of life collegiate flavor was replaced increasingly with high concept rigmarole, dice roll determined parallel timelines, Christmas themed body snatchers sing-alongs, wartime documentary spoofs, 8-bit adventures, and so much more, like a whole bunch more. Including a very self-conscious, self-congratulatory obsession with telling you that this is the darkest year yet. The semester's been so long and dark and angry. Anyway, on that weirdness. This whole thing is a trend, not a total shift. It is still the same show, but as trends go, it's a fairly clear one. Much digital ink has been spilled on the weirdness, the absurdity, the experimental nature of season 3, so I don't want to spend too long arguing for something most of you are already well aware of, but if you want a pithy summation of this shift, how's this? Community suspended its disbelief in itself. Community started to commit to wild ideas without worrying so so much about keeping those ideas grounded, or about having its characters react realistically to those ideas. Classic episodes like Virtual Systems Analysis or Regional Holiday Music, for instance, only work if we play along. It isn't just that wacky events occur to a degree we'd not seen before, even in the paintball episodes, the claymation special, it's that characters do not react to those wacky occurrences in realistic ways. And we see that here in Biology 101. Despite featuring some classic moments, despite kicking off this beloved period, a good deal of fans don't love this one. Posts, comments, takes like this one aren't uncommon online when Bio 101 comes up, the major complaint being the way the group reacts to Jeff's desperate antics. After all, Pierce is welcomed back with open arms after having done way worse stuff way more. And so the harshness of moments like this feels abrupt and unearned. What you did? It's hard to get past that. I know you're already out of the study group, but I'm gonna have to ask that you stop being my friend. Similarly, being kicked out of biology for an annoyingly loud phone does seem pretty manufactured, but I don't think this is some unique failure in this episode's writing. No, to me, it's simply an instance of that season 3 dynamic. The episode has an idea, creating and exploring this Jeff Pierce equivalence, and devotes itself to exploring that idea. Maybe Jeff and Pierce's fraught relationship is due not to an extreme difference, but to an extreme similarity. Maybe we can see that, take it to some drama-rich places if we swap their positions within the group. It may well be that in the story we got, this is a false equivalence. What Jeff did probably isn't Pierce levels of bad, it is strange that it sees him instantly totally ostracized, but that's the conceit, and fully exploring the conceit is more important than the conceit being a perfect fit. Especially since, let's be honest, it would be near enough impossible to really sink Jeff to Pierce levels of villainy in a single episode, at least in such a way that he could reasonably be forgiven afterward. I think this this impulse, writ large, of placing the idea above the need for a perfectly naturalistic ramp up to that idea is visible all throughout this third year. It's the kernel at the centre of all those more surreal, more obviously conceptual episodes, but it's here too, from the start. And one result is character weirdness, maybe some degree of flanderization. So maybe moments like the above are the corollary of Season 3's wildness, are the price we pay for this willingness and ability to go anywhere. For some people, some fans, that cost is simply too great. But here's the thing. Sure, it's a little divisive. Sure, we lose a little something in the realism department. Sure, at times, our characters inch toward caricature and cartoonishness. All this is true, but it slaps. I'm sorry, it does. And all that applies to both Biology 101 and Season 3 as a whole. Maybe at times there's a lot you have to swallow for the episode for the season to come together, but it does come together, even at its most zany. And to really just hammer this home, I'll stop waxing poetic in the abstract and come back to the specifics of Biology 101. Because the other way this episode sums up Season 3 is that even when divorced from these meta-narratives, the show's golden age, its greatness, its slide toward absurdity, blah blah blah, 
blah, it is just good, impressive, and impressively executed. Biology 101 is about biology, kind of. I stand before you more highly evolved, Sir Swarthorne. I think we've evolved beyond reliance on a group at all. Aren't we just actual friends now, no matter where we are? I stared at a crack in the ground of myself for years, and one day something grew from it. A single blade of grass. Kane's presence here isn't just to provide narrative impetus for the downfall of Jeff Winger, it gives us the episode's theme. See, this is the third season. These characters have now known each other for years, and they're still falling into the same traps, the same misunderstandings and blow-ups they had been all along. Three years in, what do they have to show for it? For much of the episode, it seems like not much. It seems like for all the bottle episodes, villain arcs, paintball, there's been no real progression, no evolution. But then, at the end, that shifts. Pierce lies to the group, sacrifices his own standing to throw Jeff a lifeline, which is taken and cemented with another little surprising gesture to close things out. Sorry, Starface. You just lost your seat in my class. We return to the status quo, but we only get back there through real, unexpected change. The result is one of the most interesting episodes for that Jeff Pierce relationship I've touched on before. The result is an episode in which the sprout breaks through. Maybe something of the show's earlier naturalism is sacrificed for this story, but it's replaced with something equally real. And hey, it's a shame that the rest of season 3 rarely gives us this layered of Pierce. That is maybe the one respect in which this episode isn't totally reflective of its wider season. But apart from that, I think this episode succeeds, and succeeds in the same way the third season at large does. So, I don't want to suggest that this is everyone's favourite era of the show. On balance, I'm probably more of a season 2 man myself, but it's inarguable that this is the greatest, the grandest, the most flashy, most confident period of Community's run, and that it holds a special place in a lot of hearts. Maybe in the show's urge to differentiate itself, to get wild, to kick back against the pressure to normalise, to place the idea above all else, resulted in some rough edges. Maybe that even contributed to the backstage shakiness that plagued this season's reception. A surprise hiatus occurred midway through the season's airing, and showrunner Dan Harmon was, of course, given the boot between this year and the next. If this premiere did have more fun and be less weird than the first two years combined, maybe ratings would have been better. Maybe none of that would have happened, but from my vantage point in 2023, I think Biology 101 shows us that while there may have been a cost of sorts, a price to pay for this era, this period of peak creativity, it is one that's well worth paying. Thanks for watching today's video. If you're new here, feel free to let me know below what you thought, smash that MF like button, and subscribe to get notified whenever I end up making the next episode of Streets Ahead. Seasons 4, 5, and 6 are considered by many to be a weaker second half of the show's run, and to a point I agree, but honestly, I always was more excited to get into those premieres than any of the ones I've done until now. This video took a weirdly long time to write, like twice as long as something this length normally takes me, so sorry for the wait, and there's probably gonna be a little wait for the next upload too. I'm super busy this month, and the rest of the videos I have planned for April are on the longer side. But if you're too impatient, if you want the content content pipe to vomit forth more video essay slurry on the double, consider joining my Patreon. There's a bunch of exclusive videos already out over there, and another one coming up this month. It's gonna be a really cool video, I've been looking forward to making it for a while. Until then, I'll just thank all of my current Patreon supporters on screen now, especially Daniel Goldhorn, Heather Long, Ryan Emily, and Weirdy Beardy, and get out of your hair. Cheerio!